Welcome to the post review review show. I think that's what it's called. The review show that. Well. <laughs> Welcome back to the post review review show. The review show where I review games, usually after other people review games, although recently that name is making less and less sense. For instance, Someone recently, this is, a, this is a big deal, this is the first time that someone has ever sent me a game for free to review, which made me very excited. Um, I don't know if they actually even knew about my videos, but they're going to get one anyway. Now, I wasn't compensated for this in any way. They did send me this in the mail. They contacted me on BoardGameGeek and said if I would be interested in trying out a game and reviewing it. And I said, sure, and I told, but I told them I'd be upfront about how I felt about it, that I was going to be completely honest, and they said they expected nothing less. So with that in mind, Story Bowl. It's a game about stories and bowls. So this is a little party game uh, that's based on Fish Bowl, hence the name Story Bowl. We'll get to that in a minute. One of the things right off the bat that I really like about it is that it fits in this little deck of card box. And it's kind of interesting. It looks like they've been printed... I don't know if this is a prototype copy or if this is what the game will look like. Because it looks like they've been assembled by hand. Um, and that's what the cards look like. And this is all you need to play the game. Now, it is a variant on uh, the classic game of Fishbowl or Celebrities where you write down a bunch of names and you put them into a Fishbowl and you play it. Which is probably... Uh, and in and, and that game, Celebrities has obviously inspired one very good party game called... Monikers, which does have a review, uh, it has several reviews, one of which I will link, which is the Shut Up and Sit Down review of what a great game Monikers is. Now, Monikers is great because they did a really good job coming up with hilarious people or places or things to play the game of celebrities with rather than forcing you to come up with your own. And the way it works is that there's three rounds, and in the first round, you can say anything except for the title. So this was a children's toy where large mammals are consuming things very quickly and you want to Hungry, do... Hungry hippos. And that's exactly correct. Um, this was a painter who painted Starry Night and killed himself by shooting himself in the stomach. And he was... he has a museum in Amsterdam that we didn't go to. Van Gogh? Vincent Van Gogh, correct. Okay. okay. And then the next round you only... you do charades and in the third round you... Um, apparently you don't do charades. No. It's, it's charades and then one word. No, that's how Story Bowl is. No, they're the same. No, they aren't. Monikers is all the words, one word, charades. Oh, really? Yeah. I should know. That's like one of my favorite games. Well, the point is they're <laughs> very similar in that regard. They're very similar to the sort of public domain game which they're based on. I'm a big fan of Monikers. We love it. I recommend it. It's my wife's favorite game, as she just said. So when I got Story Bowl and I looked through the rules, and it's similar, although I guess the turns are slightly different, and it makes sense actually why they're different. At first I was like, oh, this is just, it's kind of like Monikers. I mean, Monikers itself was just based on a game that existed, so it's not like this is a huge intellectual property infringement. But I was like, okay, we've been here, we've done that. Except that there is something different going on in this game that I think is actually really sweet and endearing. And we gave it a shot because I said I would review it, and I'm really glad that I did give it a shot because I actually really like it. And I'm, I'm happy that it's in my collection now. Story Bowl is as if Monikers had a baby with this other weird, I'm going to call it an activity, that we picked up at a thrift store a long time ago. This is called Family Dinner, and it's just a box of questions. And when you open it up, you draw one, and it says something like, what is your biggest fear or phobia? And you're just supposed to say, hey, what's your biggest fear or phobia? And everybody just talks. It's not really a game, it's just an activity, but it looks really cute because it looks like a piece of pie, and we thought it was funny. Story Bowl is as if this game and this game had a baby. And it's a really interesting combination, because what it does is instead of giving you um, either A, pre-made options, or B, 
nothing, which is what you get in a game of celebrities, which is just a bunch of pieces of paper. You give everyone a certain amount. There's a, I think it says 18 or something in the, in the rules, but as always, whenever I play these kinds of games, I just sort of gauge it based on the room and the amount of players, whatever makes sense. So say you give everybody three of these cards and they then take pieces of paper and they write down three words that for them are related to the prompts. So a friend you haven't talked to in a while, a company or band you like, or a time when things were awkward. And so you write down three words that are supposed to tell a story or you can, um, so a time when things were awkward. Uh, messed up my review, maybe, is something that I might, uh, or actually that's four words. Messed up review, might, I might write down. And then when you write down your three words on three or however many pieces of paper, all of these go back to the box and then you put the, th the pieces of paper in a bowl or something or this giant cup. And then the game pretty much proceeds and it's exactly like celebrities, except instead of having Vincent Van Gogh or um, Bill Clinton written down, it's these three random words. And what's hilarious is nobody else knows what your prompt was. So messed up review has no context for them. I'm trying to think of some other like really awkward ones that have come up. Can you think of any? Oh, there was the one that was like Danny. Danny clothes chest? Yeah. Right, so it's like the prompt was. Things was in it? our bedroom. And my wife wrote Danny clothes chest. And that was our friend Danny who lent us a clothes chest, like a place you put clothes. But at least half the people at the table thought that we were referring to Danny clothes chest. Um, and and it, just, it just sounds random. And the other thing that's really funny is that you have to get them in order. So the first round is just like any other version of any of these games where you're saying, uh, Portland friend with the tattoos. Um, Danny. And uh, she actually, let me just make up one really quickly. Um, oh, fun. All right, so it's like um, walking. Uh, it's uh, running, uh, but more generic jogging, uh, more generic, just from point A to point B stroll. Just no, nope. hopefully I can edit, say this in editing from point A to point B is one trip G going. Okay. Um, can you say it? And this is the opposite of down up and then. Uh, this is like an escalator, but not moving. Stairs? So. Going upstairs. Now, that is now a prompt in the game that will continue to show up. And there will be, the next round will be, uh, you know, charades. So maybe you go like this and people get going out upstairs. <laughs> the hilarious thing about this, just like monikers, is that you're using the same prompts every time. So by the time you get to the third round, which is one word, you just say... Um, escalator maybe and they get going upstairs the prompt I got for this was a time you pushed yourself physically and I came up with going upstairs because I am NOT in good shape and I get winded going upstairs the result is this game that's actually takes a little bit more time to set up and I, I am gonna admit I'm a little disappointed that I love this graphic design it does this like this dock thing you know that kind of looks like an old um, I don't know, like old timey newspaper, comic, co books. comic books or something. Yeah. But unfortunately, very quickly you, you're done with these and they go away. And it, you know, the game gives you these scorecards, which are not that necessary. And there's a couple of silly typos in here. There's a couple of like this card, but it really doesn't matter. Some of the prompts are, are, are better than others, frankly. Uh, a task or chore from your childhood, that's pretty good. A time when things were awkward is pretty good. Um, I, I recommend, just like monikers, maybe going through and, and, t you know, and taking out ones that are sort of boring to you. But the thing that's so interesting about this, that's so different, is due to the nature of these cards that somebody else has thought of, that they make you reflect. There's one in here that I really, really like. It's um, a memorable experience you had with somebody else in the room, right? Quality, when you play this game with a gathering of friends, you actually do learn something about them. 
You know, you learn these stories. It's really fun at the end of the game for everyone to sort of reveal what their prompts were, what what caused them to write really big dookie, which is what one of our friends did the last time we played this game. And the answer was child, the prompt was childhood achievement. And he wrote really big dookie, which was a hilarious card the entire game and also just a really silly uh, association. But then you also learn stories uh, about, I learned about a really bad date that my wife went on before she, before she met me, by the way. Um, you know, and so you actually, I don't know, it has this same, it has this kind of family dinner-esque quality where it's definitely fun and it's that same sort of silly experience, but instead of it being, uh, I don't know, like hungry, hungry hippos, um, it's something personal. And so for that reason, I actually almost prefer Story Bowl to Monikers if it's a small group of friends, like four people. Moniker, Monikers, in my experience, isn't that great at four. Um, you either have to do two teams of two, which doesn't really work very well, or you do a cooperative version. I don't know. It's just never been as much fun as it is when you have 12 people and the game really shines because you have all these different people guessing. But there's something about Story Bowl that works even at lower player accounts. I'm not sure if I would want to play it with 12 people because I don't... The whole process of getting everybody the cards and having them write down the prompts and putting it in the bowl and just a little bit more explanation. So there's something about this that I actually prefer to monikers if it's a small gathering of friends four, five, six people. Like, I'm thinking of a couple of friends that we have that will play board games with us because they're very nice people. But I don't think that they love the game so much, but they just like spending time with us. And this this game achieves a slightly, slightly more of that family dinner, getting to know each other, spending quality time feeling about it. I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's, it's also funny. Um, just like monikers can be funny or any of these games can be funny But I guess what I would say that I like best about it is there is this sort of this sweet quality to it where um, you Learn about a book that your friend wished that they hadn't read, you know, you learn something about somebody and and I have to give it props that Yeah, I guess you could make this just like you could make that or you could play celebrities but I don't know, I don't think I would have thought of a book you wish you hadn't read as a prompt, right? And, and that's sort of the value of it. The other thing that's nice about it is it fits in this little deck of cards. And it's really easy to take with you to your next social event. So if you are going somewhere with people that you're like not really sure if they're going to want to play a game or not, that's in your pocket. Whereas this, you know, is not a huge package, but... It doesn't work quite as well and it and yeah you could take out some of the cards and take just those but this many cards from this box is not as much variability as this is this is essentially infinite variability because every single individual who ever experiences it is gonna write down a different three words so I don't know. I think that there's something neat about this little package and it's on Amazon right now for $15. I, I guess I would say that whether you own monikers already or not, if there's any part of you that thinks that there might be some occasion that this is useful or fun or, you know, we're going to visit some family this weekend and I'm going to bring this with me because now it's kind of, it's a somber reason that we're getting together. It's a funeral. Um, and so that's also another reason why I'd be more inclined to bring this than I would be to bring monikers because, you know, this, this by being a little bit sweeter, by being a little bit more, um, you could even do it like themed like for the one you lost or something, you know, like you memories even, that have you, to do with Nan. You know what I mean? Yeah, you could even do it themed. I actually saw an Amazon review where somebody did it for a wedding and they, everything had to do with the bride and groom. So that's the thing. Whereas Monikers has some crass cards in it that I maybe wouldn't want to play with my wife's parents, you know, on the weekend that we're the, at the funeral for grandparent passing, right? I mean, it's just not really as funny then to get like a, dirty card, you know? 
And whereas this, there's nothing crass in here unless the people you're playing with choose to make it crass, right? Because the three words they put are crass. You know, there's that, there's that difference there. So I don't know. I, I guess what I'm saying is I recommend it. And then the next round, you can only say one word, um, which I might say haystacks. Monet. Yeah, okay. Van Gogh again.